Hey guys, what's up? Tech Flash here. So today I'm gonna go on a bit of a different route and talk about the world's second biggest phone manufacturer, which recently has greatly contributed into providing the average consumer with some of the best smartphones that we have seen in recent years. But at the same time, I can bet that a lot of you have probably never heard or heard very little about the company in question. The company that I'm talking about, as you probably have seen from the thumbnail, is BBK Electronics. And I'm gonna talk about who they actually are, what phones they make, and how they managed to become the second biggest phone manufacturers in the world. The smartphone has a number of major players these days outside the familiar brands of Apple and Samsung, Huawei has been trying to cement itself as the second largest brand with successful pushes into Asian and European markets. But its position has been put into jeopardy due to Huawei's ban from US markets and technology. Instead, the best position contender comes from the lesser known BBK Electronics. BBK is a Chinese multinational corporation and it owns a number of popular brands across various consumer electronic markets including headphones, Blu-ray players, and smartphones. It also oversees a number of major smartphone brands including some of the fan favorites like OnePlus, Oppo, Vivo, and Realme. Now I'm sure most of you are wondering who is the man behind BBK and how was this company founded? BBK Electronics has been operating in various sections of China's electronic industry since the 1990s. Duan Yongpin, a billionaire, had started the company after successfully generating more than 1 billion yuan, which is approximately about $160 million from the Subor gaming console, which was a competitor to the Nintendo Entertainment System. At the time, Nintendo not being available in China, Duan partnered up with the chipmaker MediaTek to come up with a replica to the Nintendo system by reverse engineering it for the local market, which became an overnight success. But Duan's genius didn't end there. Duan then went ahead and advertised the console as a learning machine by adding a keyboard and some dictionary software to it. This was a bold move especially targeting education obsessed Chinese parents which furthermore boosted the sales for the console. Duan also relied on celebrity endorsements like Jackie Chan who advertised alongside with it so the company could capitalize on the console's success. In 1995 Duan left his position and at the same time started the company Bubu Gao which would eventually become BBK. The company now owns factories spread over 10 hectares of land with roughly 20,000 employees. BBK Electronics began by manufacturing a range of CD, MP3, and DVD players alongside with other household applications. These appeared under a range of global brands. In 2004, Duan founded Oppo with CEO Tony Chen. Oppo then built on Duan's experience in the video market by selling DVD and Blu-ray players before moving into the smartphone market. Vivo was the first major BBK subsidiary founded by Duan and Vivo CEO Shen Wei in 2009. The first Vivo smartphone appeared in 2011 with a focus on ultra slim form factors while relying on celebrity endorsements to capitalize on the smartphone boom. In fact, Oppo's first smartphone was actually promoted in China by none other than Leonardo DiCaprio. Vivo's core business is feature pack mid-rangers but has grabbed headlines in recent years with its experimental Apex concept phones and the Next series. Recently, Vivo also launched the X70 series phones which is a flagship category device and is known to have one of the best cameras in a smartphone. Realme is similarly a much newer smartphone company with some call an Oppo spin-off. It was established by Sky Lee who was previously the vice president of Oppo Electronics in May 2018. The brand originally appeared in China as Oppo Real back in 2010 before rebranding and entering a series of new markets including Europe and India in 2018 and 2019. Realme's phone combined cutting edge tech with affordable price tags. It even managed to snag the best of Android 2019 award. Just like Realme, Duan wasn't really the brains behind OnePlus either. Instead, former Oppo Vice President Peter Lau and co-founder Carl Pei set up the company in 2013. While OnePlus has the highest global profile of any of the BBK brands, it is still a subsidiary of Oppo, making it a subsidiary of parent company BBK2. OnePlus is also arguably the most premium brand of the bunch and also the brand that Western customers might be most familiar with. However, it takes a different approach to Oppo 
Popo and Vivo's retail-based business model, OnePlus primarily targets online sales via platforms like Amazon, which has helped BBK enter European and mainly US markets. When it comes to smartphones, BBK Electronics is a big deal. Even though most consumers have never heard of it, Oppo and Vivo have long been major players not just in the Chinese smartphone market but internationally too. OnePlus and Realme are quickly adding additional markets and sales on top of the company's Chinese stronghold. In China, Oppo and Vivo have managed to surpass the growth rate of the once seemingly invincible Xiaomi by building a network of local stores while its competitor focused on its efforts online. Apple and Samsung have struggled to keep pace with the cost-competitive nature of China's homegrown mobile brands including those in the BBK network. At the last count, BBK moved ahead of the combined might of Huawei and Honor and is right behind Samsung in terms of global shipments and share. Looking at the BBK brand individually paints quite a different picture. There's a familiar first, second and third ranking from Samsung, Huawei and Apple respectively. Oppo remains BBK's largest individual brand and is only a couple of percentage points behind Apple for third place on its own. The change over the past couple of years is mostly due to the huge growth in markets such as China and India. Chinese brands have capitalized on their home market and their value for money proposition has played well in India and Southeast Asia. Combined with aggressive of marketing and investment in retail network, India's market leader Xiaomi has started feeling the pressure. Meanwhile, Apple and Samsung in particular are struggling to grow their brands in these markets. By spreading itself across multiple brands, BBK has managed to tailor its products to suit various market segments. The strategy has clearly paid off in China and is quickly growing across India and now in parts of Europe too. A big reason for the success also actually lies in the name of the company, which loosely translates to going up step by step, which captures the company's slow and focused approach. Instead of chasing the competition and entering into a ton of categories like Xiaomi and Samsung, Oppo, Vivo and OnePlus for the longest time have really focused on their phones and they comparatively avoid adapting to risky categories such as foldable devices. This may be very frustrating to us tech freaks but it doesn't mean the company is lazy or lacks innovation. Rather, it's a choice that clearly reflects BBK's going up step by step approach which helps them release a product when they know it will pretty much be a success. This focused and rather boring approach ensures the company never releases a product that will flop hard, such as the first two Samsung foldable phones, and this further ensures the company creates safe and sustainable brands that over time go up step by step. So anyways guys, that is BBK Electronics for you. I hope you enjoyed this video which took a bit of a different approach from what I usually post. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about it. If you enjoyed it, a like would be much appreciated. Do consider subscribing for more similar content. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.